Hey, welcome back to Gary Brown Forging On. And um, today I'm gonna talk to you about a my hammer and tong cart that I made. What it took to make it. Um, I'll show you some measurements. And at the end, I'll have some slides and things. So uh, the rest of the time, I'm just pretty much gonna point the camera at the at the uh, uh, hammer and tong cart. cart. Uh, I made it, um, I made it a few years ago but um, it's worked out really well, all except for the casters. I'll try to show you those if I can. Um, I bought them from Harbor Freight, the small ones, supposed to be like up to 100 or 200 pounds uh, per caster. And I know I don't have that much weight, you know, four to 800 pounds on my cart, but uh, they're pretty much rolling out from under themselves and it hadn't even been moved but a handful of times. So I'm going to take them all put some really good four inch casters from like Lowe's or something on there. Forget about that Harbor Freight junk. So anyway, um, this, I got a couple bulbs in my fluorescent light keep going off and on, driving me nuts. So I'm using my other light here to try to shine and make up for it. But anyway, I'll uh, turn around and let's look at the hand cart or the hammer cart. Okay. So I'm gonna move my tripod around, get a little bit further back here if I can. There we go. And as you can see, um, let me get around here and talk a little about it. <clears throat> what I did is I made this initial frame here at the top. And I just cut them at 45 degree angles and I welded this and this is, a, I just made them 25 inches. You can make them 24, make them whatever size you want. Mine was 25 by 12. Made that frame. And then I came in, after I welded it up, I put in this cross piece. And then I put in these pieces here to use to hold things. Like this. <clears throat> I made the gap here one inch. Then all these three are inch and a quarter. And this last one's about an inch and a half. And that way um, I can vary it in sizes. And so then I've got my various hammers in here. And it's wedged in there. So, <clears throat> when I was making this part, I cut eight pieces, 28 inches of one inch square tube, and the whole thing's mounted on one inch square tubing. And I used um, eight pieces, 25 inches long, same width as the length as this. And then I put a two inch gap in between for my handles. And that may be a little big. You may want to go smaller, it's up to you. Um, but I, so I'd cut uh, eight of these two inch pieces. I laid one on the, uh, on my table and got it squared, set up, tacked it. Then I just laid the piece on top of that as a guide, tacked it, laid the third one on top of that, tacked it, fourth one, tacked it. Then I took them all down and welded them all up for these. Um, but <clears throat> then I had to come up with an angle so that these would go through and not hit down here like this. So I wanted them to come at an angle. So let me pause it and move the camera around where you can see. So, <clears throat> so what I did was basically I eyeballed. I knew I wanted these about eight inches apart. So I put from this corner to this corner is eight inches. And then I made, uh, I set one of these up and I actually used, after I kind of got the angle I wanted, then I actually took a speed square because I didn't have a protractor handy. And I laid the speed square in here and I'll put a picture at the end of what it looks like. And then at the bottom I had like a, a series of numbers and I just used that same number and that was my uh, way of keeping my angles the same. So I used that for the same process on all four of these. And so <clears throat> then I welded them on and they're only welded at the tops and bottoms underneath on each end, but it's way strong enough for hammers to be in. And then, uh, then I wanted for a tong 
rack. I bent this so that it was the same distance across, which was 22 and a quarter inches to the outside. And then I came out on this one, six and a half inches. And then this last inch I bent in and so I had more surface area to weld so that it would, it would hold up my tongs. So I did that around here and I welded across the tops here. Got a bunch of sawdust. And then I'm gonna do another one up here and it'll come out about two or three inches. That way the tongs would come down behind these. But these are all the tongs I have right now. So um, I figured I can just, you know, keep welding. It's only a quarter by one inch. I can just keep welding another one on you know, whenever I get to that point, need more tongs. I don't have any of them on the other side, but I'm gonna do the same thing over there. So, um, so that I can show them how to do it. Now, another thing, let me move you around here. is from this half, I, uh, it's actually open underneath here. It only goes from here, then all this was open. And what I was gonna do is put a piece of plate, uh, sheet metal underneath, and then it'll just be like a catch-all for parts. And I could put blocks on there to hold these. But I had these two pieces of, uh, uh, they're two by 12s. And so what I did is I put them together and I screwed them Really close to the outside as I can get them so my holes wouldn't hit the screws. And I put several screws around the bottom up underneath so it comes up into here all the way around. And then I laid this all out in a grid pattern. And this is like, you know, a three quarter inch spade bit. And then I think I went down to like five eighths, nine sixteenths, half inch. I can't remember my sizes. It's been a while since I made this. And so as I made the smaller ones and went to the bigger ones, I always made sure I had about a half inch between. So after I, I took the, the width of my drill holes and then, um, so I would have a little bit of gap in between, try to keep them close to a half inch in between each one. And then as I went, as I transitioned to a bigger, from a medium to a bigger, as it went through, I just made sure I you know, added my two together and then, um, and then divided it by half so that I, I went from center to center. And then I added a half inch in there so I knew where to put the next line. I did that all the way through and I did that all the way down. And so once I laid it all out, then it just was a matter of sitting under a drill press forever. And I set my drill press for a stop, a depth stop, so they would all just go down the exact same depth. And, uh, and I just went along and drilled them and had a whole lot of wood shavings. But I ended up putting that on and putting a few screws underneath here so it, it holds in place. Well, it moves, but it, it won't uh, go anywhere. Um, and I, so if I, can, if I want to take it off and, and take it with me somewhere, I can. So I have this side to put in whatever I want to on, you know, as far as hardy hole. It's basically hardy hole tools out through here. And then on this side is going to be a all my punches and chisels. And these green ones and orange ones are all from Harbor Freight. Um, these, a lot of these I made myself that are not, but these ones I, um, I use as Harbor Freight because you can buy a whole pack of, pack of them for, you know, pretty cheap. And then I can just uh, grind them and make different, different patterns for different figures like what I'm doing. Like these here are for when I'm doing horse heads and some other things while I'm making for demonstrations, and then I can just grab what I want out of here. So let me show you the other side. Now, on this side, um, like I said, I have not put the tong holders yet, and what I do is I come out, I have like a one inch little tab, and I'll come out six and a half inches like it was on the other one, come across the 22, whatever I said, come back and then tab it in, and that gives me more surface area to weld to so that it won't flex so much and break off. And I'll put another one up here for, uh, for tongs, or, or I could put something else. I could put
put another one of these on the side here and have it or just put shelves. I mean, there's all kinds of things you can do. It, that's why I've left it open so I can kind of adapt it as I go and see what I need. Um, I just put that screw in. That's my, uh, my flux spoon. It was a project, one of the 15 projects we had to do for a green coal class um, when I'm at the guild or club I belong to. I made that probably four years ago or something. Uh, the only thing, like I said, I do differently is, is I want to get rid of, I'll probably cut these angle irons off or I'll just unbolt them down here and, uh, and they're not even showing up, sorry. Okay, there we go. So uh, I would take these pieces of angle iron out or I'll unbolt these, these cheap casters from Harbor Freight off and um, and then I'll uh, I'll either put some four inch ones that are heavy duty on here from Lowe's like I put on another table and it rolls really nice um, and either I'll, I'll either cut this off and put a whole nother angle iron with holes drilled in it or I'll just take these bolts out and I'll just weld you know the casters right on and just have to, I'll figure out once I get the casters I haven't bought them yet and I don't know if they'll show up or not here, but let me see if I can show you these casters and what I mean. So, I guess you can see that down there. This thing is angled and it won't even roll anymore. And even though I put this on a couple years ago, I've only rolled this thing around a handful of times. It's not like it gets rolled every day. And it's just, they're just ripping right apart right there. There we go. It's just at an angle. They're sit cockeyed now. <clears throat> so don't buy Harbor Freight wheels. They're just junk. So. Anyway, that's my cart. And I hope you um, you know get a chance. Maybe it'll help you in making make one for yourself. And I made, I did have, I did take some still pictures when I was uh, building it, and uh, and I'll post those at the end in a series so that you kind of see step by step of what I'm talking about in my little discussion here. Sorry, I'm moving the tripod over here. I know I should have paused it. Okay. So that's my hammer cart, and I've got my hammers. No, I've got a everything hanging on it. Um, just got to watch that these top flat areas up here. They become catch-alls. I have to uncover all that just so I can do this video. <clears throat> so um, I need to find a place for those, and and uh, and I got some oddball-shaped ones. I'm not sure how I'm gonna put those I might I thought about putting a shelf underneath here and walk around I thought about like putting some kind of a shelf across but I think it's I just don't see how I can do it without being in the way of the hammers or I can come out with a shelf like this and then I can just lay stuff in there and that way I like that idea that's not a bad idea either so I hope this was helpful for you uh, please, uh, you know, if you like this, please subscribe to the channel and hopefully I'm coming up and it's all right, but please like the channel, subscribe and comment. Let me know what you think. And if there's something I forgot to mention and you want to know the measurements on or anything like that, just let me know and I'll post them in the comments. So y'all have a blessed day. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.